Welcome to stage two of the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge, sponsored by Adnoc Distribution, the national energy giants who've been powering this event for the past 27 years. 239k of special with 90% of it over the sand and dunes. It should be a little less treacherous than yesterday, but there are still plenty of sharp drops that could catch out the competitors. If you thought day one brought drama, you haven't seen anything yet. Tobias Ebster, who was lying fourth overnight, did not start today. A fall on day one jarred the Austrian's right arm, and that was enough for him to call time on this year's event. Down at the start line, the riders were preparing for a big day ahead. Overnight leader Michael Doherty opening the stage. Opening the stage, it's going to be pretty much the first time, so it's going to be a learning experience for me, so looking forward to that. The South African flew off the start line this morning, but the early morning drama continued. Doherty's rally quickly unfolded. At just five kilometers in, he came off the bike heavily and his rally was over. Back in the stage and with Jean-Louis Le Pan now, the Frenchman loves sand racing. He's a specialist in these conditions and had that KTM hooked up. After a solid ride alongside Ross Branch, he eventually finished third today and finds himself comfortably in the top three overall. I need to, to open the stage because Aaron and uh, Conrad stopped for help uh, Mike. And uh, I wait a little bit for Ross and uh, luckily I find a solution to follow Ross and uh, I have amazing, amazing day with Ross today. Uh, big thanks to Ross uh, to help me about the navigation and uh, the speed. Ross Branch now and with that new engine bolted to his hero machine, he had to dig deep and start clawing back the 45 minutes he dropped on day one. It was a strong start, but he also lost time towards the end of the stage. Nevertheless, he completes today fourth fastest. You know, uh, yesterday was a big disappointment for us, uh, but that's racing. It happens, it can happen to anyone, and uh, just glad to get to the finish yesterday. So, yeah, we got to we got to get uh, get to the finish of this race. It's a, it's a tough one, and uh, yeah, we just got to keep it on two wheels and, and keep the wheels rolling. Ireland's Oren O'Kelly, after opening the road yesterday, had less of a navigational challenge today. 15th into the stage meant he was able to follow the tracks from the riders in front of him this morning and get his head down and ride hard without pressure. And the time reflected that. A great effort. O'Kelly, fifth fastest. It's nice to be racing with, uh, with, with this sort of passion and momentum now from, from Dakar and from everything else. I feel like I can push a little bit more, but also keep it safe as well. There's some big accidents today. Um, I hope all those guys are OK, but this is racing. Both Aaron Murray and Conrad Dabrowski were still in the stage, though. Both riders waited with Doherty until help arrived and would get that time back at the finish line. Dabrowski coming into today third overall and settled quickly into the conditions. He was riding well. And with Doherty out, the Polish rider knew that he was now in the fight for the overall win. He completed today's stage second fastest. Which meant it was Murray who set the pace. The South African, after getting 30 minutes back for waiting with the injured Doherty, was on the bike and riding flat out for the remaining 234 kilometers. A masterclass in riding in the dunes and Murray a full two minutes quicker than Dabrowski. He now finds himself leading overall, but his mind, well, that was on other things. You know, we train together all the time, so yeah, my training buddy will be out for a little bit now, but you know, I'm sure he's going to make a strong comeback and yeah, it's a part of the game and you know, it, it can happen to anyone, you know, I've been there and unfortunately, uh, you know, it happened this time to, to my friend. Confirmation then of Murray's win today over Dabrowski and Lapan in third. 
all that means, Murray now leads the bike category overall by seven and a half minutes from Dabrowski, with Lapon third and Branch with some serious work to do. In the quads, Camille Wisniewski once again had to settle for second best in the dunes today. Abdulaziz Ali keeping the tempo up and with another stage victory, he remains on course to take his fourth consecutive Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge win. So Ali pulls another stage win out of the bag today, nearly 10 minutes clear of Wisniewski with Hani Alnumesi in third. All that means Ali now leads overall by one hour and 18 minutes after Wisniewski's day one troubles. In the Ultimate and other FIA classes, it's not just about overall glory. Drivers in the World Rally Raid Championship can also pick up precious points for stage wins. So we try to, to, uh, to be in the front because every stage is very important for the championship, you know, five points, but OK. We try to do our best, like prologue, and uh, yesterday we win. Yeah, we try to, to be in good, uh, good pace. Nasser al leading out today and quickly followed into the stage by Guillaume de Mevius. Well, traffic jams look a little different in this part of the world, but the Belgian was able to thread his way through this herd of fascinated onlookers. But it turned out to be a disastrous day for de Mevius, who had to withdraw after jumping a big dune and suffering a heavy impact. His co-driver, Xavier Ponceri, had to call for medical assistance, and we will let the pictures speak for themselves. It's OK. Are you OK? There were no breaking lines. Damn it. Damn it! It's a back injury, yes, because it was a big compression. So uh, um, maybe some um, uh, vertebra, uh, not broken, but uh, maybe a disc a little bit uh, squeezed. Or, I don't know. I'm not doctor and it's not my job. Uh, it's the end of the race, yes. Yes, unfortunately. Saoud Variawa had only done four rallies back home in South Africa when he learned up on the Dakar last month at just 18 years of age. Talk about diving in at the deep end. He is nevertheless at the wheel of a T1 Plus Toyota Gazoo Racing Hilux and he's here in Abu Dhabi to learn the dunes. After suffering with motion sickness yesterday, he had a much cleaner run to finish in seventh. Yazid Al Raji finished with just eight litres of fuel yesterday, sacrificing some speed to ensure he made it to the finish line. The defending champion adopted a similarly conservative approach today. He didn't attack too hard and praised his co driver, Timo Gottschalk, for a solid effort. The Saudi coming home in sixth place, 7 minutes 41 off the pace. Juan Cruz Jacopini continued his fine start to the rally with another top five finish. 
The Argentine said today was a real toughie and you had to be so focused going over these sharp and dangerous dunes. But he feels comfortable on the sand and says that he and his former biker of a co-driver, Dani Oliveras, are doing a fantastic job together in the almost perfect Hilux. The standings back them up, they're third overall. Considering this is his first Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge, Lucas Moraes is doing a remarkably good job to be second overall, but we know the Brazilian's a fast learner. He was third on his maiden Dakar. He did have a few issues today towards the end and needed several attempts to get over one particularly troublesome dune, but Moraes is still flying and came fourth on the stage. For me, my lack of experience in dunes sometimes is, is, is too much clear. <laughs> But uh, no, I'm happy, one more, one less. I think we've made some progress on overall, which is important. Thanks to the whole Toyota Gazza racing team. And let's keep pushing now. Well, speaking of the Toyota Gazoo racing team, Seth Quintero said this second stage was a lot of fun, even if he felt it was harder than yesterday due to all of those nasty drop-offs. The American was quickly caught by a charging Gerland Shishiri and latched onto him the two Toyotas working in tandem as they soared over the dunes towards Mazaira. Third place for Quintero, he's up to fourth overall. We heard from a confident Nasser Alatia this morning and the Qatari had another smooth outing in his quest for more W2RC points. The reigning world champion said that he and Edouard Boulanger were very careful. They managed to avoid any mistakes and any bikes for that matter. They opened from start to finish but missed out on the stage win. Their overall lead is eight and a half minutes over Marais. But no doubt about the man setting the gold standard today, Gerland Chichery sailing over the sands in his golden Hilux. The Frenchman had some issues yesterday, so he was determined to put the hammer down and make up some time. He's also relieved not to be struggling with motion sickness, explaining that last year's problems were linked to his big crash at the Dakar. Shishiri outstripping Quintero and the rest to take the honours, and he's right back in the game overall. Feast your eyes on this. But sometimes the plan goes well, sometimes the plan goes wrong today. <laughs> The plan uh, worked perfectly, so no, it's good. It was the plan to push. Uh, we really wanted to try the, to win the stage because yesterday we had a really bad days and we, we lost a lot of time. So now I, I have no choice the, the, to fight uh, every kilometre to the end. Shishiri takes the win by 2 minutes 44 from Alatia with Quintero third. Lionel Bo, Marcus Baumgart and Pau Navarro round out the top 10. Marais and Jacopini are the only men within 10 minutes of the leader, Alatia. Shishiri is 17 minutes off the pace. But Demevius's rally is sadly over, with hospital scans today revealing a compressed vertebra. We won't see him again this week, so let's find out a bit more about the Dakar's runner-up and his new wingman. It was a very, very good way to start the year, unexpected. So uh, now we just have to focus to continue like this for the championship. My only goal is, is the championship. We decided to go together one month before the race, I think. So a very late decision to, to go together. It was not easy for sure at the beginning. It was the first time for Xavier in French. It was my 10th Dakar, but the first one in French. So from time to time, uh, I, I struggled to find a good word in French. So sometimes he talked to me in English in the car and I say, I'm a French speaker. <laughs> so that was quite funny because he said, oh yeah, shit, sorry. Uh, and then start again in French. We were with Xavier in a very good mood. Uh, we were uh, working together and with the team very well. I really thought, and it was my objective, that uh, uh, we can together reach the top five. I mean, close to the top five. I didn't realize so much the position I had until the end. And after the race, that was amazing because I had the time to realize what we did. We finished second, so yeah, it was a it was really, a really nice experience. Thank you. 
Xavier, the human side was very easy from the beginning. Guillaume uh, is a fast driver, uh, for sure, but he is also a really good listener. It means that uh, when you tell him something, you don't have to tell him ten times uh, after the first time uh, he understood. For the work side, we had to adapt a little bit, and, uh, and now I'm sure for this race we will do much more better. We are coming here as, uh, let's say, leader of the uh, World Championship because, uh, because Carlos is not here. For the first time, I'm not anymore an outsider. As a privateer, it's nice to be able to fight against all the big boys. Abu Dhabi is a really tough one uh, uh, for the car, for the crew. Abu Dhabi dunes are very specific. We have some, also some very fast sections with big drops, and it's not easy to see them. We saw in the past on the bikes and in the car also some big accident here in Abu Dhabi because it's quite uh, challenging and that makes this race quite difficult. Another day of hard racing lay ahead for the competitors in the Challenger class. Cristina Gutierrez back out today after the cooling package on her Taurus failed yesterday and cooked the engine. The Spanish driver currently leading the World Championship after her Dakar win is on the back foot here in Abu Dhabi and today she needed to fight, crossing the finish line of the stage fifth overall but not happy. I am not very comfortable with the car. Uh, I need to speak with the guys because um, I don't feel really power in this, in this engine. After a third place finish yesterday, Laia Sands was hoping to continue that momentum today, but a mechanical issue saw her limp to the stage end. With over 30 minutes lost, she subsequently drops down the overall leaderboard. Worse though for Puck Klassen. A misheard note and her Taurus ended up in bits after a multiple barrel roll down a dune. Fortunately, everyone was okay. Up at the front though, there was no such problem for yesterday's stage winner, Austin Jones. The American was once again on spectacular form and tamed the Abu Dhabi dunes in his Can-Am. Another stage victory making it two out of two. His eventual winning margin was over three minutes. It was a really good day for us again today. Uh, we pushed pretty hard today, honestly. We took some risks in some places, but never really any scary moments. But yeah, the stage was really nice. It was a little bit faster paced, so I like that. And yeah, we had a good day, another stage win. So, you know, that's always a good time. Behind Jones, once again, came Rokas Pachuska. He was embroiled in a fight all stage long with Hernan Gasses. By kilometer 210, the pair were separated by only four seconds. But Bachuska slammed the hammer down for another second place stage finish in a row, leaving Garces in third. Three days more, you know, uh, you can do a little mistake and game over, you know, need to keep calm, just uh, keep going, not to push too much and uh, we'll see how it's going on. Saudi Arabia's Dania Akil was on a stormer. She is just going from strength to strength and today built the speed as the stage progressed. A steady start turned into a fast, flat-out finish and the 35-year-old began climbing the leaderboard. By the time she arrived at the stop line, she had jumped from sixth to fourth. I really like those fast parts that come in between the dunes. Uh, it gives you a bit of excitement. Uh, the dunes were very technical, uh, soft sand. It was hot, actually, um, but honestly, it's a really good challenge for both driving and fitness. Confirmation then of Austin Jones's win. He's done the double. Can he repeat it again tomorrow? Not if Rokas Bachuska gets his own way. All that means Jones now leads Bachuska by over six minutes with Hernan Gasses third and Danny Akil just 23 seconds further back in fourth.
We're very excited to be coming back to support Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge, to support the spirit of motorsports. We are always uh, keen to be working and supporting communities in the areas that we operate in, and, and this region is a very has an important uh, and a special place in our operation. So uh, it's, it's not uh, a surprise that we are here, closer to the community, supporting the, the 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 event and making sure that everybody enjoys. So we are quite pleased that we are yet again uh, a key partner to this uh, most exciting uh, uh, race. This year, Marwan Rahman is one of our employees in Adna Group. He's uh, participating in the race. We wish him all the best. We wish all the uh, participants in the race uh, a, a memorable race, a successful one, a safe one. And definitely, we are uh, looking forward to see Marwan at the finish line and, of course, everybody else arriving there safely, but with a lot of memories and great fun. Rebecca Busi got a helping hand with her pre-stage routine in the SSVs. Her boyfriend Nacho Cornejo, whose Honda team are absent, providing some moral support. I get more nervous or more anxious than when I'm racing. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, but being in the outside, it's not easy. It's not easy, but it's fun. The Italian successfully completed her second Dakar last month. She's now finished once in Dakar Classic and once in the T4s. And she continues to improve alongside her highly experienced co-driver, Sergio La Fuente. The OnlyFans racing duo had a smooth run today, finishing fifth on the stage. They're also in fifth place overall. However, disaster struck for the overnight leader, Joao Ferreira. He ground to a halt at kilometre 80 with a major mechanical issue and lost a lot of time making repairs. It was, in the words of his South Racing team boss Scott Abraham, a casualty of the desert. Ferreira dropping over three hours and waving goodbye to his overall prospects. It was a much happier routing for Sebastian Guayasamin, who's adapting nicely to these Abu Dhabi dunes. The Ecuadorian says that if you can overcome the empty quarter, you can overcome anything. He was third today and sits third overall. Guayasamin is determined to keep fighting with the guys ahead. So I think today we only have four minutes uh, of difference, so we have to keep on pushing. It's not over. We have to, uh, three more days, so they're going to be very spicy. <laughs> Mansour Bill Hilly began the day behind Joao Ferreira, but pointed out that small mistakes can cost you the rally, as his Portuguese rival was set to find out. The Emirati said it would have been risky to push any harder than they did and was perfectly happy to finish second. He is our new overall leader. But the stage win went to Yasir Saidan, who's determined to follow up his podium finish at the Dakar with victory in Abu Dhabi. Having driven with Adrian Mech in his native Saudi Arabia last month, he's enlisted the help of Adrian's brother Mikael here. They avoided the stage's various pitfalls to win by over three minutes. I've seen uh, two cars run over in front of me and I saw too many cars stop after uh, cartoons. I'm glad we are finished in a good position. Um, I think uh, we made a good ride at uh, stage today. Saidan, Bill Hilly and Guaya Samin separated by only 5 minutes 40, with Lithuania's Justas Grandelis the best of the rest at just under 20 minutes. Bill Hilly takes over at the top, with Ferreira plummeting down the standings to 10th place. It's been a drama-filled day here in Abu Dhabi. The bike category has been turned on its head. We wish Michael Doherty and Guillaume de Mavius a speedy recovery. Tomorrow, the competitors head back out for another day of racing in the scorching desert dunes. And with bad weather coming, you don't want to miss it.